Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship on the Web, brought to you by the British province of the Moravian Church. I'm Carol Acker from the University Road Belfast Congregation, and I'm joined by Sister Eunice Hoey, who will be bringing us the message for today. Also taking part are Sister Roberta Hoey, and music will be provided by Brother Alistair Douglas and Brother James Woolford. Let's commence our worship by taking a moment to join together in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the privilege of meeting together, for the wonders of technology which allow us to do so wherever we may be in the province and beyond. We thank you for the happiness, the support, the encouragement and the inspiration that comes through sharing fellowship. Speak to us today through that fellowship, through your word and through your spirit. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. These are the watchwords for Sunday 13th March, the second Sunday in Lent. From Psalm 33 verse 16. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. And from Mark chapter 10, verse 31. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Kings are not rescued by the force of armies from the grave, nor speed nor courage of a horse can the bold rider save. Vain is the strength of beasts or men to hope for safety thence, but holy souls from God obtain a strong and sure defence. And this week in the prayer cycle we're asked to remember my own congregation, the University Road Congregation in Belfast. These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored Of famine and darkness and sword Still we are a voice in the desert crying Prepare ye the way of the Lord Behold he comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice God. 
Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have, uh, have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. O God of my salvation, if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. At that moment, some Pharisees came to Jesus. Go away from here, they said to him. Go somewhere else because Herod wants to kill you. Herod is a bad man, Jesus replied. Tell him this. I am still causing bad spirits to come out of people. I am still making sick people well again. I will continue to do these things for some more days. On the third day, I will have finished my work. Anyway, I need to continue my journey for some more days. If they are going to kill a prophet from God, it has to be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, your people have killed God's prophets, and they have thrown stones to kill other people that God has sent to you. Many times I have wanted to bring all your people near to me. A female bird covers her babies with her body to make them safe, but you would not let me keep you from danger like that. So listen, your great house will now become like a wilderness with nobody in it. I tell you this, you will not see me again until the day when you say, Great is the man who comes with the authority of the Lord God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Onwards towards love and chaos. Luke 13, 31 to 35, Psalm 27. <clears throat> when we meet with Jesus in our reading from Luke today, he is in the midst of his journey towards Jerusalem. It immediately begins with a warning from the Pharisees. Do not go on. Do not go on any further. Go somewhere else. They are clear that Herod intends to kill Jesus, but Jesus remains determined, and not only determined and unswayed by the threat, in fact, he will continue to minister today and tomorrow. Jesus wasn't speaking from a place of ego or confidence in his own safety. In fact, he knew he was on a journey towards his own death, not because of the threat of Herod, and because it is a completion of his mission and ministry. We have seen him rebuke evil in the desert already, and now we see him walking towards forces of violence and oppression 
in the city, constantly showing his love and always seeking justice. Throughout Lent, we are preparing ourselves to experience Jesus' death. And this passage is calling on us to reflect not only on his perseverance to complete the journey to the cross, but on our own life and mission as a result. As we journey with him, we should take time to examine our own hearts, reflecting on our attitude and continuing to love and seek justice. As I started to put this service together, the whole world has been watching the tragedies unfold in Ukraine. And at times it feels very overwhelming and very difficult to comprehend the violence that has been going on for days and even into weeks. Alongside the de desperation, there has been some stories of strength emerging from those who have stayed, for those who have continued to look out for their own elderly and sick, and for those who have had to leave for those surrounding countries who are offering help and shelter. The poignancy of this event happened during Lent is not lost on me. And I can't help but look to Jesus in our reading today to feel his push, reminding us not to lose hope, but to have confidence to face our challenges and oppressors to keep journeying on even if the way feels hopeless. And it is in our Psalm today, Psalm 27, that we find the guidebook to confidence in overcoming fear and hopelessness. First, we always express our gratitude and our faith very loudly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Speak your faith, even if you feel afraid. In the psalm, David is troubled and fear is knocking on his door. The rest of the psalm speaks of his enemies and troubles. Yet, here he is expressing his faith out loud with confidence. He is saying what he knows, and even though his feelings don't match what he's expressing. Secondly, we need to learn, lean into our faith and express it. Through an army in camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Yet, again, I will be confident. It is easy to, it is easy to focus on problems and disasters, but it is important to always lean into your faith and express it. Next, we have to seek out an experience of faith. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Often, in times of heartache, it feels too easy to give up on God and faith. If you allow trouble to come between you and God, it will move you away from him. But if you refuse to let trouble separate you from God, it will stay on the outside and be a force that pushes you towards God. Lastly, we worship and take joy in our faith. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. When we feel least like worshiping God, that's when we need to worship him most. Worship makes God big in our hearts. It puts awareness of who God is into our hearts as he magnifies our own struggle and begins to diminish. And we can become confident on our journey forward. The remainder of the psalm turns <clears throat> us towards prayer and to rely on God's problem, provisions in every difficult situation. There's always a time in the midst of when the voice of God speaks to us and says to us, when this happens, seek my face, saith the Lord. Respond. Through prayer, through prayer in time of trouble is really a response 
to God. The psalm tells the truth of life as we know it, even in the midst of depth and despair, have faith. There are deep questions and many unknowns and many difficulties in our life. We are reminded at the end of the psalm that God will prevail and that we must wait on him and not turn our backs. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is a time, a difficult concept in the midst of tragedy and chaos that we must, like Jesus, journey on as we wait the Lord, for he is with us. Even as Jesus journeyed towards Jerusalem in tragedy, we see that God is always present. Jesus uses the image of a hen gathering her brood under her wings as an image of God who longs to take his brokenness and pain and offer shelter and protection to each and every one of us. <clears throat> Our lives, particularly in these Lenten weeks, sometimes feel like living in attention. However, I hope that we will take courage to journey on towards love and confidence, even in chaos. May we trust in a God who walks in the greatness of our lives and how he finds a way out of the wilderness for each and every one of us. May we wait for the Lord with a hopeful anticipation. Let's go off our fears and trust, trust a new ending to God. Who is our light, our hope? Be strong and let your heart take courage during Lent and stay beyond. Amen. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect love. Father Almighty, Redeemer and Ruler of all, we are lost and in need of your direction. At this time of Lent, we pray for a renewed focus. Help us to turn away from the things in this world which take our attention from you. May we walk through this season intentionally. O God, our strength and shield, defend us from those enemies which hurt the body and cleanse us from all evil thoughts which afflict the mind. For our sake, Jesus fasted and allowed himself to be tempted. Protect us so that we may not be led astray by temptation. Strengthen us against sin. Give us a hunger to study scripture so our souls may be nourished with the heavenly food of your word. May we see your goodness and glory in new ways throughout this season. Guide us to the path you would have us take and grant us mercy to hear your direction so we are guided by your will. Let us live the lives you intend of us. Give us the strength, motivation and courage to be your good and faithful servants. At this time of Lent, we think of the difficulties and struggles of others. Sometimes the world feels very dark and filled with grief and pain. Lord, shine forth in every dark and broken place in this world. By your grace, give comfort to the grieving and protection to the weak. We pray for those who are sick and suffering in our world, whether this be in body or mind. Give them comfort and assistance let them feel your presence and peace. While our Lord Jesus lived on earth, he showed us how to abide by your word and do your will. He was a friend to the widow, the orphan, the persecuted, the lost, the oppressed, the despised. 
there are many in this world who are in need of our friendship and our support. Strengthen us to care for each other and all of your creation and to follow Christ's perfect example so that others may see God's love reflected through us. Father, protect your people from evil. Protect and defend us from all enemies that rise up against us, seen and unseen. Merciful Lord, we know that you are at work right now in this troubled world. We give thanks that you are with us always and have good in store for our future. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that needs your presence and healing. Amen. memories of growing up with the Moravian Church. I was introduced to the Moravian Church when my parents, Margaret and Harry Trimble, brought me to be christened. As I grew, I attended church and Sunday school each week. My older brother, Ronnie, was a member of the church choir, and my younger brother, Norman, was involved with the scout troop. University Road was a part of our lives. My husband Leslie and I were married here in 1966 and our daughter Helen and granddaughter Naomi were christened too. Helen and her husband David were also married here. Sunday school Christmas parties have always been very enjoyable special occasions. I have enjoyed the fellowship within the church and members are like extended family. What, what, what makes University Road special? Because I started going there when I came to Belfast 
and all the family went. We usually had two seatfuls and um, my aunt and uncle came and they lit up the Lisburn Road and that was June's father and mother. She was English. University Road obviously has a great deal of meaning to me. I was born into the congregation, baptised, confirmed, married and have within the last year had my own son baptised um, and a member of the congregation. But when I think of church, when I think of University Road, the overwhelming word to me is fellowship and the, the special people within the congregation. While our numbers may be small, it means that as we worship together, uh, it's more meaningful because we have closer relationships with each other than we would perhaps in a larger congregation. Having become a mother to Joel in the last year, I'm just so thankful that um, he was baptised in the congregation and he'll grow up in a church where he has the opportunity to learn about God and have his faith nurtured in a place where he is valued by so many special people. His baptism was a really emotional time for me because there were so many people that that mean so much to me were in the congregation of course my own family members but then my wider family people who have known me since I was born and are now going to see Joel grow up in a church that's so special to me and I hope that he will become involved in the congregation in the same way that I and my family have been um for all of our lives um I like the way that everyone is nice and kind and the children's talks are very interesting. University Road has always been very special to me, starting in 1935. I attended Sunday school and was several years in the choir in that time, which had between 20 and 25 members. I really enjoyed being in the choir because we sang at all the special services, gave concerts, and at Christmas went carol singing. I enjoyed teaching in Sunday school for several years, and I was married in the church to Ken in 1957. One of my favourite societies that I am a member of is the MWA. I really enjoyed meeting members from North Carolina who visited about 20 years ago and who we recently this year got to see on Zoom. One of my fondest memories of the MWA was getting to visit Czech Republic and Germany. I have many very happy memories of my life in University Road over the years and have made lots of friends, some of which sadly have passed away, but leaving behind the happy memories. Going to church. I see my friends. So you like to hear stories in church? Yes. Who's the stories about? Jesus. And do we sing songs in church? Yeah. And who else goes to church with us? <laughs> who goes to church with us? Does Granny go to church? And Charlotte? Mm -hmm. And Harry? Mm -hmm. And they go to the Sunday school, don't they? Yeah. Do you like Sunday school? You get to hear lots of stories, don't you? Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we have joined together in worship this morning from all over the world, from around the British province, from our homes, from our holidays, for, or even taking time out of a journey, we are amazed that even though we are not together in the flesh, as we participate in this act of online worship, we are drawn together in and through the work of the Holy Spirit. As we are gathered together in this online space, we are the body of Jesus Christ. 
You are the light of our lives, the light of the whole world. We pray that you will enlighten us as we go out from this sacred place into the world. May we be strengthened through this time in your presence to go out with love in our hearts and gratitude on our lips for your goodness, your love, and your grace. We are grateful for this time of refreshment, for we need these times apart from our daily routines to resettle our hearts, to rest more and more fully in you. Thank you, Lord, that this has been a special time as we reflect on what it means to be your people, to be sent forth in your name, to take to the world the gospel of peace and love. It is not an easy task that you have called us to, for you have not called us to follow safe paths, but rather you call us to travel the good path. And even though the way is not easy, when we rest in you, your calling, your presence, we find unexpected joy along the way, and we find the strength that we need to sustain us, and the wisdom to understand the blessings that you have given us in calling us to your service. Keep us strong in faith and humble in heart, as we seek to be your faithful people now and always. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for having shared with us in worship today. As ever, it is our pleasure when you are able to join with us. Thanks again to those who participated in worship today. Join us again next week. Goodbye.